Here's a quick explanation for you looking at the timing diagram for a simple PLC program and this time we're including the effect of a high speed input from our tachometer and looking at how that interacts with the scan cycle of the PLC. So at the bottom of the diagram here we've got the marks for when our scan cycle starts and ends. So I'm going to start off with drawing and I'm going to follow that line from where our scan cycle ends up and line that up with my input because at this point in time and at the very start as well this is when the PLC takes the value of the physical input and puts it into the memory so we can see for all of this first scan cycle the value is going to be at the zero state because it gets saved into the PLC memory in this first position right at the start when we get to the second scan cycle starting in here then the PLC can see that the input has gone up to a high state so it does the same to the memory value right through to the next scan cycle which is looking at this point so I'll draw that across and at this point it turns off again so if we look at now our I0.2 at these same points in time we start off at a zero value and at the end of that first scan cycle, the beginning of the second scan cycle, we're staying at zero. So that's through to that one there. We've got another point here, still at zero the whole way. So now that we've got these values in the memory, these are the ones that the PLC uses when it's creating or solving the logic to find out what's going on with the output. So if we look at the logic that we've got on the left side, we say if our input 0 is on and if input 2 is off then that gives us the logic to turn on our output so in our first section this first bit of time we've got both of our inputs being off so that's going to make our output will stay off as well when we get to our second scan cycle you can see the memory is turned on for this first one input 0 so that satisfies the logic condition on this side so logic is going to turn on and input 0 2 is still in an off state so looking at the logic on the left side that's going to turn on now so it's giving us the right conditions and we're going to have a small delay so I'll draw that line a little bit past there that's showing the time that it takes for our PLC to store the values from the inputs into the memory and then once it gets into solving the logic program it's going to decide it needs to turn on this Q0 memory and that's going to be up until the end of that scan cycle our physical output for this output Q0 it always happens at the end of the scan cycle so looking at this point around here so we'll say that from the beginning it's turned off and it keeps that off value so the value that we had up here the end of the cycle that becomes the new value for the following scan cycle so it has to stay off as well and if we do the same thing with the last part of our second scan cycle where the memory has turned on that's going to flow through to be the state that our physical output uses for the following period of time so it's going to be just the end of that second scan cycle around here one of the last things that the PLC does it's going to turn on that and hold it on for the entire remaining scan cycle so you can see there's always these delay effects where the value of our input gets held in memory sorry that drawing got a bit messy that's the idea we have this delay where whatever this value of the input is that value gets stored in the memory of the PLC and the same for these ones and it's a combination of these memory values that actually gets used for solving the logic so hopefully that's a good starter to show you what's going on with this relationship where we have some short delays we have the inputs being read into memory at the start of our scan cycle and at the end of our scan cycle or in the middle first in the middle of the scan cycle we have the input memory values 
being used to generate the output memory value. And then at the end of the scan cycle, this point here, that output memory value gets transferred to be a physical output value. So there's always going to be a delay between the value that the logic puts into memory and then a short time later, at the end of that scan cycle, that value gets transferred to the physical output circuit. So I'll leave the rest of that diagram for you to finish off and we'll see how you go with it.